when I say the word hydration, I believe that it's obviously way more than the water we drink, but the water that we drink is very important. However, it's not actually the most effective way to start the hydration process in the body. So I'm gonna kind of go through some layers here. Number one, what, what, when we're talking about hydration, we can talk about hydration inside of the cell, which is actually a specific form of hydration. And I believe it's mostly produced uh, by the mitochondria. We can talk about the hydration in the space surrounding the cell, which is the interstitial fluid. That is where the lymphatic system lives. That's where a lot of the immune system lives. That is also where there are what are called capillaries. Um, and that's the, the kind of tiniest, tiniest branch of our circulatory system. And we can also then hydrate our blood, that, that fluid as well. And so to have complete hydration, each of those spaces needs to have adequate, adequate water, if you will. And it's a misnomer that the water that we drink is going to have a main line right to our cells. I truly believe that we have to have a more strategic way to hydrate than that. And also, when we drink water, uh, it, if, if you drink water on an empty stomach, it gets absorbed within about five minutes into your bloodstream. However, I find that in order to truly hydrate someone, you actually need to combine water with minerals. And specifically, especially at the start of the day, it is great to consume what's called an isotonic solution. Meaning, oh, isotonic just means, uh, I'm not even gonna say what, talk about what isotonic means, but by isotonic, I mean essentially having the same ratio of minerals to water as our blood has. So our blood has a specific ratio. It's like, it's, it's essentially very similar to when you get an IV bag. That IV bag to hydrate someone at the hospital is not pure water. It actually contains a certain ratio of water to mineral. And so that's what we're talking about here. We need an appropriate amount of water and minerals as well. If we drink water that does not contain minerals, we are likely to pull that water out of our body and flush it through our kidneys and urinate it out because we don't want to actually flush our minerals as well. We want to be able to hold on to those minerals because those minerals act as uh, essentially enzyme cofactors for every reaction in the body. And so we absolutely need our minerals. And so this is what happens when the, the when we're, when we wake up in the morning, like when we wake up in the morning, we've lost a lot of water or I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of hydration through breath breathing it we are always breathing out this um this water vapor and so we want to make sure especially and if your breathing mechanics are poor at night when you're sleeping which mine used to be as a mouth breather i was horribly dehydrating my body um, my, my mouth felt dry my tongue felt dry and so when i wake up in the morning i made it a key strategy of mine to say okay how can i best hydrate myself and I started off on my water journey, I started off with reverse osmosis water. You know, I wake up, I would drink about 12 ounces of reverse osmosis water. And that would start this cycle of needing to urinate all day long. Yes, I would drink, I would drink RO water. And for those of you who don't know, reverse osmosis water or reverse osmosis, the process itself purifies the water. So essentially, I was doing a good job of thinking to myself, okay, I know there's toxins in my tap water. What can I do to get those toxins out? Well, my, that was the first go-to is reverse osmosis. And so the issue with reverse osmosis is not that it, it's a bad at purifying the water. It absolutely will remove the toxins, but it also will strip minerals from the water as well. So because I was, I was almost over hydrating my body with just pure water and under consuming minerals. And that, and that pattern looked like me needing to urinate very, very frequently throughout the day. Well, okay. I thought to myself, well, let me see if I could add a couple of mineral drops to my water. And so I started adding essentially drops of Soleil or drops of, you know, like a, a sea salt blend, if you will, into my water. And that certainly was more hydrating. Um, it, it, you know, my body wanted to pull in that water a little bit more. But I found that, you know, I started running through this with myself, with clients. I thought, well, what if we give more of an isotonic blend of minerals and water? And that can look like actually consuming isotonic water or isoton an isotonic ratio, which is called quinton isotonic, or it can be making a, a similar ratio, not exact, using purified water and Soleil. So either drinking a glass of water with a teaspoon of Soleil in it, or drinking a certain amount of this truly quinton isotonic, which that quinton isotonic mi uh, almost perfectly mimics the fluid to mineral ratio of the blood to the extent that Rene Quinton, who was the, the, the developer of this, actually was able to take blood out of animals, the actual blood itself, and replace it with the quinton isotonic, and the animals were thriving. And so we know then that this is a very 
healthy blood hydrator. And so I started having my clients start their day with Quintan Isotonic. And we started with, oh, what's 10 milliliters? Okay, well now what's 20? How does how do you feel with 30? And I find that the vast majority of my clients really feel good starting their day with about 30 to 40 milliliters of this Quintan Isotonic. When you consume it on an empty stomach, it goes really quickly to hydrate the blood. And then if they want to consume additional water, I'll have them wait about five minutes and con consume an additional glass of water with maybe a couple of drops of minerals added to it. Conversely, I will have them just consume, let's say, a 12 ounce glass of water with a teaspoon of sole in it. And I talk in other videos, uh, previous videos about sole. Um, and that, that's another way to, to, to add a better, ha have a better blood hydration. Why do we want to hydrate the blood first thing in the morning? Well, if there is any form of dehydration in the blood itself, the capillaries can start to wall themselves off or prevent fluid leakage. And that ultimately will impair the ability to deliver nutrients to the cells themselves. So we've got this, this what is called a drought management system built into the body. And this was really elucidated uh, from an Iranian physician named Dr. Bat Mangalich. Uh, he's written many great books, including You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. So you can look into his research if you're, if you're interested in this. And what he has found is that if the blood starts to get dehydrated, the body actually elevates histamine. And we generally assume that histamine only gets elevated in response to an allergen or an environmental trigger, something along those lines, a food of some sort. But it turns out that histamine, when it's elevated, can get elevated simply if our blood is dehydrated. And th what the body does with this histamine is histamine makes the capillaries leaky in certain places to like essentially the essential organs of the body and walls them off in others. So for example, my body will use histamine then this histamine drought management pathway to divert hydration to my, to my brain, to divert, to divert hydration to my heart, really, really key organs then less so maybe to the, to the muscles. Um, and so I wanna make sure that my blood is absolutely hydrated when I, when I first start my day, because that means that then all the food that I'm consuming, where the nutrients are gonna get picked up into the bloodstream, I want them to be able to get delivered to every cell of my body, not just my brain and heart, which is very important, but I need every cell in my body to have access to those nutrients, which again, won't happen if those capillaries are sensing dehydration and they kind of wall themselves off. What also happens then is if those capillaries wall themselves off is that as the cells are producing metabolic waste, that metabolic waste is going to get processed by both the lymphatic system and also back into the blood to be processed by things like the liver and the kidneys. And so we need to be able to transport that waste where it needs to go. And if we don't have the fluid coming out of the capillaries to bathe the space around the cell, then we're, we're actually going to get a lot of stagnation there. And so that's where you hear about having stagnant lymph. Um, certainly, you can have stagnant lymph due to um, being sedentary, a lack of infrared light. I've talked about that before. But you can also get stagnant lymph due to this histamine-based drought management system in the body. And so that way, if we can start to hydrate that, we hydrate the blood, we hydrate the lymphatics, we make, uh, uh, we make clearing waste from the cells a lot easier, we make delivering nutrients to the cells a lot easier. And again, it, it is really can be as simple as consuming an appropriate amount of an isotonic solution in the morning or a sole water in the morning. The only downside to over consuming, uh, let's say Quintan Isotonic, is that if the body gets too many minerals in one sitting, the means that we have to flush that is through diarrhea. So if ever you get loose stools, it's a sign that that's that's a cutoff point. You don't need you don't need that amount. So back off on it. But I have had people reach out to me out to me in my uh, in my community clients. People have just listened to my videos over the years and have said, "Well, I've tried this new hydration strategy." And I had people literally say that they were they uh, ended up throughout the course of a day consuming. 100 to 200 milliliters of Quintan Isotonic and having lifelong conditions disappear within three weeks. And so there is something huge about allowing the body to hydrate the blood so you can deliver the nutrients to the cells so that the cells can repair themselves. You hydrate that space in between the cells so that the immune system can clear stuff. You can take the damage out of the cells and eliminate it as well. And some pretty miraculous things can happen. So that is fundamental for me in terms of hydration. It starts in the morning and it starts with the appropriate ratio of purified water and minerals as a on an empty stomach as a means of hydrating and nourishing your blood.